to schedule today's launch just 17 days after the last one in an effort to restore credibility to its flight schedules after a series of delays and cancellations. Crew member Don Lynn may have questioned whether he would ever get into space. He has been an astronaut waiting for a flight for 19 years. Today, Lynn's nervous 83-year-old mother and two sisters came here to see that long wait end. The Challenger in Space Lab 3 is airborne and has cleared the tower. Roger roll, Challenger. He made it! He made it! He made it! Finally, he's gone into space! <laughs> However, after they got into orbit, once again, there were problems with a satellite. Despite three attempts, the satellite failed to lift out of a canister in the cargo bay. We tried it twice and it was no go. Earlier, there had been concerns about the satellite's batteries, which are similar to those used in transistor radios. A second satellite did deploy on schedule. The scientists hope to have better luck in the billion-dollar European-built space lab, where they will conduct sophisticated research. Inside that lab, they will keep an eye on two monkeys and 24 rats, which are along to test a new space cage and to gauge the effects of weightlessness on animals. Bruce Hall, CBS News, at the Kennedy Space Center. And only a couple of minutes behind schedule. Inside the shuttle's billion-dollar space lab, the crew prepared to run 15 scientific experiments. They ran into minor problems with the drinking water and waste removal systems. They will be bringing home the satellite that failed to release. And two weeks after Discovery came down, Challenger, Challenger went up. And despite a minor glitch which delayed liftoff by a couple of minutes, the shuttle made its usual spectacular climb into space. This mission carries a 23-foot-long scientific lab in the Challenger's cargo bay. That is where the seven astronauts will be performing experiments using the 26 other passengers. 24 rats and two squirrel monkeys. Trouble with everything from the little satellite that couldn't, to dratted rat food crumbs, to a rat race pace for the human crew. Sandy Gilmore reports from what has become a kind of trouble central. So far, the Challenger's mission has been plagued with frustrations. Plumbing problems fixed. Communications problems not fixed. Computer problems. We also see that the experiment uh, computer looks uh, no go to us. A backup computer now runs experiments. When a latch failed, an important photographic mission failed with it. A special urine monitoring device failed too. The problems have all caused delays with the experiments designed to use the shuttle environments near weightlessness. Ludwig, we're a little concerned about falling too far behind. But NASA said it's encouraged at the progress of experiments. A small crystal in an oven finally began growing. Biofeedback experiments were reported successful, and physician Bill Thornton reported his rats and monkeys were healthy, though debris from the cages flew out into the space lab. We're going to have some problems if uh, we run into anything like this on this series of cages. NASA now says it's possible the shuttle's seven-day mission will be extended to eight days if there's enough food and fuel left and if the time is needed for experiments. Space with its seven astronauts, two monkeys, and 24 rats. They were in space seven days on a mission that covered 2.9 million miles and brought back a massive amount of data from medical and other scientific experiments. The landing went fine this morning, but on the way down, it triggered a sonic boom that was so loud and strong it set off burglar alarms in Los Angeles. A real bell ringer of a landing, its sonic booms on approach set off burglar alarms around Los Angeles. The California desert landing was designed to give the shuttle plenty of room without running out of runway, partly because of the added tonnage of the billion dollar space lab, partly because the last shuttle landing on concrete at Florida home base resulted in locked brakes, a blown tire, and lots of burnt rubber. Today's landing, by contrast, was California mellow. The Mojave Desert for a landing on the dry lake bed at Edwards Air Force Base in California. The landing was uneventful. But as Lynn Sher reports, it followed a mission with all sorts of challenges. The two squirrel monkeys stole so much of the space show, Mission Control even beamed up appropriate music. Once their human companions had figured out how to keep their food and waste inside the cages, and once the sickly primate got over his very human space illness, NASA pronounced the experimental monkey passengers candidates for a future shuttle trip. No such luck for the two dozen rats, who will be killed later today.
their organs analyzed to determine the effects of a weakened weightlessness. In all, Challenger gathered scientific information that could fill 50,000 books and thousands of films and tapes. They grew crystals so pure they could revolutionize electronics and medical products. They manipulated a droplet with sound waves, an experiment with implications for manufacturing in space. And they took samples of the upper atmosphere and pictures of the sun that will keep their colleagues on the ground busy for years. I think we have demonstrated conclusively that scientists can work and perform scientific research in space. And that they can cope with the unexpected. The seven crew members made the repairs on several experiments that turned this second space lab flight into what one official called a fantastic mission. Lynn Schur, ABC News. End of its seven-day scientific mission, a mission that space officials described as being fantastic. However, despite the perfect landing right on schedule, the mission has had its share of problems. Bulky research equipment, poor communications, and flying debris from the cages of monkeys and rats aboard. But the seven-man crew brought back enough scientific data to fill 200 volumes and miles of film and videotape. Seven days in space ended successfully with a smooth landing in a swirl of desert sand at Edwards Air Force Base in California. Like a space-age cat burglar caught in the act, the shuttle's swift but silent entry over the California coastline was interrupted by a series of sonic booms that rattled windows, which in turn set off burglar alarms in Los Angeles. Despite a number of problems and failures during the mission, NASA says a treasure trove of scientific data has been brought back, enough data to fill 10 million pages.